Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another Think Markets webinar dedicated to um, what's happening right now in the markets. And uh, with me, uh, Viktor Golovchenko is uh, uh, your favorite Think Markets analyst, Fawad Razakzada, <laughs> out of London. And, I'm, I'm not uh, sure about that. Uh being the favorite <laughs> <laughs> but thanks anyway. uh well uh, second okay. favorite <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> all right so um um let's start first with the disclaimer that we always display on these uh, weekly webinars uh these are for general information only and are not intended to provide trading or investment advice or any personal recommendations any information relating to past performance of an investment does not necessarily guarantee future performance. Think, smart, think markets shall not be responsible for any loss that you incur, either directly or indirectly, rising from any investment based on any information in this webinar. Please remember that spread betting and trading CFDs carry significant risks and may not be suitable for all investors. With this out of our way, um, uh, shall we jump uh, straight into the charts, Fawad? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let me just share my chart with you. Uh, one second. I think this the is main, the one. Uh, the, the main uh, uh, economic events uh, this, this week are uh, largely insignificant, uh, meaning yeah. that uh, whatever they they might be, they won't matter because we have a, a very um, um, you know different market uh, starting Indeed. from about uh, Friday or Thursday evening um, when the the new variant of the coronavirus uh, has been uh, discovered, <clears throat> confirmed, and. Uh, all hell broke loose after that. So, um, uh, yeah, well, why don't we discuss a little bit uh, what, what, what happened over the past uh, three days uh, before we delve deep uh, into what might happen in the next uh, five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it almost feels like last year again, doesn't it, uh, when... Um, coronavirus first was discovered um, the markets panicked and everything sold off and here we are again into end of 2021 um, um, yet another variant of the virus has been found and this has raised concerns that uh, demand could be uh, hit because uh, countries will go back into lockdown and travel and um, other um, sectors of the economy will be hit um, and the yeah. uh, it responds well, the main and, worry is yeah. uh, that uh, the the vaccines that we have been using and up until now yeah. won't be working uh, against this variant. Yeah. And uh, while for now it appears that um, at least this morning the uh, uh, European authorities stated that uh, the cases of the new Omicron uh, uh, variant seem to be uh, mild. Yeah. Uh, we don't know what the long-term effects could be. So, uh, yeah, it's too early to tell uh, whether there's any um, real reason to worry, but the market is always forward-looking. Yeah. And uh, we had uh, drastic moves, especially in oil prices. Yeah. So, um, the, as, as Victor mentioned, uh, it's uh, worries about whether the, the uh, current vaccines are effective against the uh, strain of the virus. And um, on Friday, you know, people panicked. And then on Monday, there was some calm in the market. As you can see, oil bounced off the lows, although it then sold off. Uh, European um, indices and especially U.S. markets, uh, they rallied really hard into the close on, Friday, um, on Monday. Uh, but futures are down today. Uh, so the markets have been all over the place trying to figure out what's really going on. Um, I mean, if you look at the S&P 500, for example, um, if I can find it, the... I'm, I'm sure I'm looking at it. Oh, it's right here. Uh, you can see yesterday it, it rallied um, and made up most of the losses it had suffered the day before on, on Friday. 
uh, but then futures are um, down sharply um, at the time of this recording. So um, the markets are all over the place. And uh, what that means in terms of trading um, is that um, it's uh, providing you opportunity to take advantage of uh, short-term swings um, in either direction um, as uh, the market awaits um, further news um, on the uh, effectiveness of the vaccines or whether or not um, this is something to really worry about. Um, For now, uh, it's risk off. Uh, Stocks are falling most of the time Um, and you're seeing uh, crude oil weakening because of demand concerns. So uh, we would uh, favor looking for um, risk off trades in this market environment until the markets tell us otherwise. Is that the, the way you would approach it as well, Victor? So, um, first of all, um, let me um, highlight that uh, any uh, real information about yeah. the effectiveness of the vaccines against this variant is expected to be obtained in about uh, two weeks' time. Yeah. So, there's uh, plenty of time for market turmoil. And um, going on the long side here would be uh, rather uh, risky. I agree. Um, yeah. What 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 seems to be the more prudent approach would be to to uh, sell rallies rather than buy dips. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. At this point in time, there is just too much uncertainty, and uh, the the weight of the um, fundamental news on the market uh, could be exacerbated by. Uh, uh, thin liquidity as well, uh, just uh, as uh, uh, we have seen on Friday, yeah. when uh, uh, we, we had this, uh, um, you know, th- Thanksgiving uh, holiday in the US, which was totally uh, uh, unexpected for, for for these, the moves that happened uh, yeah. were totally unexpected, primarily due to the fact that uh, there weren't so many traders at their desks. Yeah. Um, So where that has left the market at the moment is that, well, on the one hand, you know, you're seeing stock markets coming down uh, a little bit um, or quite a lot if you zoom in. Uh, This is the weekly chart. Um, On the other hand, you know, uh, people are um, pushing back their uh, rate hike expectations, and we've seen bond yields yes, fall as that a result. Is something that has been uh, pressuring the dollar this morning. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, uh, the the rate hike expectations last week were for yeah. July of uh, next year, and uh, as of this morning, those have been pared back to um, September. Yeah. So as a result of that, uh, we're seeing. Um, Currencies that were previously being sold really heavily, like the euro dollar uh, currency pairs, I should say, uh, because of expectations that the ECB was going to not hike interest rates anytime soon compared to the Federal Reserve. We're seeing a reversal in the trend of that. You know, we've seen a sharp reversal in in the euro dollar. It's not necessarily the end of the downward trend, but we've seen a uh, you know reversal in the underlying uh, bearish momentum because people are no longer expecting the Fed to be as hawkish going forward as as, um, possible, um, as they had previously indicated. And today the focus will be on Chairman uh, 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 Jerome Powell, who is testifying um, uh, at 3 p.m. London time. So um, if, if right. Powell does um, s- suggest that uh, because of the uncertainty caused by the new variant of COVID, that they are going to um, perhaps uh, not uh, uh, fast, uh, not not speed up the the pace of tapering. Then that's something that could hit the dollar further and cause yields to to weaken even more. Um, I feel so- like uh, this has already been uh, uh, priced by the market that uh, they want taper faster. Yeah, as we uh, we were beginning to to have. Um, <laughs> some market players uh, saying that uh, the, the Fed might taper faster uh, yeah. as at the beginning of last week, but uh, by now these uh, theories are dashed and crashed. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, so so um, it looks like that's not going to happen. And another um, uh, central bank, uh, not the conventional central bank, but the crude oil central bank, <laughs> in other words, the OPEC, um, that they're not going to um, uh, bring back more supply of oil. Um, uh, it is as the OPEC um, obviously before uh, they were expected to 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 raise uh, output by um, uh, by 400,000 uh, barrels per week and then you know we saw the um, US and several other countries uh, releasing uh, re- re- uh, you know reserves um, in the market to pressurize prices that had very little impact um, or no impact at all uh, as prices rallied. But now uh, the, the the new variant of COVID has caused uh, demand concerns to raise. And uh, some of the OPEC members have come out and said that, you know, they will probably hold back releasing more supplies to the market because of the new variant. So um, in other words, the, the OPEC is going to try and um, prevent oil prices from going down further by not hiking output um, at their meeting on Thursday. That's what the market is expecting. Um, whether or not they will um, remains to be seen. But for now, I, I think the, the, the probability of them hiking um, um, output by 400,000 uh, barrels per day has fallen quite substantially, I, I would say. Yeah, yeah. So um, if they do surprise and, and hike uh, output, despite some members saying that they, they're not, then that uh, is going to cause further pri- uh, weakness in in oil prices, and we could sure. see uh, sub seventy, uh, possibly sixty, uh, you know, uh, sixty five, uh, even this this kind of level here uh, on Brent um, um, later on this week. But the uh, number one uh, driver, as we keep mentioning, is concerns about um, the new variant of COVID, and um, you know. Keep a close eye on the breaking news uh, regarding the spread of it, the uh, vaccine's um, effectiveness against it, and uh, whether or not um, it's more transmittable, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those kind of uh, headlines are going to drive the markets. It's going to be a very headline-driven market in the next few days, uh, weeks yeah. even. Um, so um, that's that's uh, in itself a, a good opportunity because it will mean that you will get lots of tradable. Um, um ideas uh or opportunities i should say uh but the, the, the point like, is- uh, we could uh, revisit um uh, august uh, this summer's uh, lows in oil prices uh was this the august low yeah yeah uh, i think it's possible um given that you know uh, the the opec is meeting this week uh, they could surprise by not uh, well i mean they could not surprised uh, they could uh, hold back um, releasing more more oil back to the market um, and you know there's a possibility that concerns over um, the uh, variant of COVID could uh, intensify further um, all of that could weigh uh, on oil prices and we could see um, sorry uh, I meant uh, the, the OPEC could, could surprise the markets by releasing the 400,000 um, yeah. uh, barrels of oil per day um, so so there is a possibility we could revisit those um, levels again um, uh, you know and and there's also the um, other factors that could come in for example the uh, ongoing weakness in emerging market currencies uh, like the Turkish lira uh, demand from you know, emerging markets could fall for crude oil has been falling uh, could have been falling in, in in the last few 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 weeks and months because of the weakness in their currencies um so there, there are reasons why oil could go down and we've been banging on about it uh, in our previous webinars that uh, oil prices will go down and they have now gone down um, but whether or not we will revisit the uh, august lows remain to be seen um i reckon that um it's likely uh, that we will re- revisit this uh, these levels uh, given the ongoing uh, bearish sentiment and momentum, which is to the downside. Um, it's not going to be a, in a straight line, uh, but um, I think over the coming weeks, we could uh, be heading slowly but surely towards those levels. Um, you know, from a technical point of view, uh, this uh, trend line has broken down um, on the Brent contract. Uh, yeah. the, the trend line going back all the way to April um, 2020. So there's less uh, and reason the for... And is uh, finally yeah. broken. This, this uh, very long uh, yeah. for, for, for 
uh, I would say, uh, what, a year and a half, something like that. Yeah. Uh, of uh, relentless uh, rally in oil prices that uh, is finally put, be, being put uh, to a halt and uh, um, market players are now having uh, second thoughts about uh, the, the prospects for uh, oil prices to continue moving higher. Indeed. Um, so that's the situation with crude oil. Um, should we look at... Um... Any other markets that... Uh... Yeah, sure. Let's uh, have a look at uh, what the dollar has done. Uh, yeah. Most, most foremost. So uh, the, the, the news actually wasn't very positive for the dollar because uh, we, as we discussed uh, already, um, the, 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 the rate hike bets uh, have been pulled back. Yeah. And uh, the, the dollar has suffered against uh, pretty much every... A major counterpart. Uh, it's uh, uh, yeah. It 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 it, uh, it suffered against uh, the uh, well, save the commodity currencies. I would yeah. say that uh, probably those were the only uh, currencies that you know uh, the Aussie, the 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 Kiwi, this is the Aussie, yeah, um, and, and the uh, Canadian, Canadian dollar yeah. that. Uh, are obviously uh, closely related to the prices of commodities, which have dropped on. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we have seen uh, uh, these currencies uh, underperform the, the the U.S. dollar. However, yeah. against the euro, the Japanese yen, and the pound, uh, the greenback has uh, pulled back. Uh, yeah. And uh, consol- it's, it's consolidating uh, recent uh, gains uh, against the uh, triad. And uh, we will we'll see what happens next. Uh, we'll, we'll basically, what, mm. what uh, <clears throat> the future development of these uh, uh, markets would be is uh, contingent on the action or inaction on the part of the Fed, uh, we could yeah. see a resumption uh, in, in the moves uh, higher for the dollar, which just over the past uh, 15 minutes has actually uh, staged, a, staged a comeback. Yeah, uh, uh, let me just... Pulling, uh, pulling back yeah. uh, so, some of these losses from the morning. But uh, yeah, the, the 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 overall trend uh, remains intact. We're still, uh, the, the, I mean, the dollar is still holding its uh, uh, key levels. Um, yeah. However, it has encountered uh, some serious resistance here against the Japanese yen. Uh, I mean, we uh, have a uh, triple, uh, tri- triple, or even quadruple. Uh, top around uh, 115, which it has reached, and uh, uh, those levels back from yeah from 2018 from 2000 and, yeah yeah 1460 my my bad so um, yeah yeah the the 1450 area uh, was uh, briefly uh, touched uh, briefly breached breached after that. Um, but uh, price couldn't hold above those levels. So um, what we are currently seeing is a uh, significant uh, pullback, uh, well, relatively significant. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> considering the fact that uh, the, 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 the likelihood of this variant being uh, um, dramatically affecting uh, the the pandemic situation uh, the pullback has been rather modest yeah. about uh, 230 pips from the top around 105 uh, 50. 55 yeah um yeah so so basically with the japanese yen um, outperforming uh, it it clearly points to risk off and the dollar being all over the place uh, because of, uh, uh, well, because people have been reducing their rate hike expectations from the Federal Reserve, but meanwhile, they've been selling commodity dollars. So the best um, trade ideas, if you're bearish on the market, um, and if you trade currencies, would be to sell the um, commodity dollars against the Japanese yen, right? 
Um, so something like the Aussie um, yen uh, would be um, would be where I would concentrate. Um, uh, I would concentrate on maybe the the uh, Canadian um, because of the crude oil prices. Uh, but all of these uh, currencies are t- testing their respective support areas, making it difficult to trade uh, them short at current levels because um, there's a possibility um, that they could bounce back. Um, so um, as we mentioned at the start, it's, it's best to uh, sell uh, near resistance rather than uh, buying support. So right now it's testing support. I would be less willing to buy this, even though the long-term trend is bullish, uh, given the current uh, situation um, with the coronavirus. So um, yeah, we may see a, 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 a rebound in this currency cross, for example, but uh I would be more uh, in favor of selling the uh, resistance levels, such as, uh, for example, on this one, um, 89.75 is a potential resistance at the low from um, from Friday, which was bre- uh, breached on Monday. So if we uh, retest that, le- that level later on today, then I would be more inclined to perhaps go short there rather than buy the dip at uh, where we are right now. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it all depends on um, the the situation with, um, with with the coronavirus. Now, meanwhile, we've got a question from one of our at- attendees in the webinar. Um, HH Hassan is asking, uh, is it possible to look at the monthly outlook for the FTSE and gold? Um, yeah, sure. Let's uh, have a look at those in turn. So let's look at it. FTSE first. Um, the FTSE 100 um, is uh, currently uh, down... Uh, uh, in, uh, you know, along with all the um, other major indices, but uh, uh, it's testing the 200-day moving average, uh, which is a long-term, um, which is a long-term support, uh, moving support uh, level, isn't it? Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it uh, uh, creates a low around the 200-day moving average, depending on the um, situation with coronavirus. Uh, but if it uh, closes decisively below it, um, then um, that would be bearish because it would uh, uh, be the first time that the index would close below the 200-day moving average uh, since before the um, start of the pandemic. Okay, so keep an eye, yeah. uh, a close eye on the 200-day moving average. Um, yes, it's, it's tried to break it a few times in the last few days and uh, previously in September, but uh, uh, in each of all those occasions, um, the, the, the buyers have stepped in to, to defend the index. Um, so, so keep a close eye on that. Um, on the monthly time frame, um, uh, it's uh, looking a little bit more interesting uh, because we have we are testing um, a potential. Yeah, we, we we tested a previous, uh, uh, I would say, area of uh, uh, resistance. Yeah, which is uh, this is where it was before COVID. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, before uh, COVID hit the markets in 2020. So. so despite all the all of the liquidity that um, the, the UK government and uh, the UK central bank have uh, introduced into the market, um, stocks here still can't reach those levels, mm. pre-pandemic levels. So yeah. something's off. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the likes of the DAX, um, let me just get rid of everything. Um, the DAX hit a record high this week. Um, the the French CAC hit a record high. Sorry, this month, I should say, not this week. Um, and uh, likewise, all the major US indices uh, hit record highs. But the FTSE and the Spanish IBEX, these indices haven't um, hit um, highs. And they have, this is the IBEX monthly chart. Um, they have been the um, underperformers, uh, pro- pro- underperformers uh, among the major uh, indices, uh, for one reason or another. Obviously, the IBEX, uh, you know, the, the situation in Spain is not as good as uh, other European nations in terms of economic uh, growth. Uh, uh, Spain is lagging uh, its major European peers, mainly because you know Spain is a um, is a is a tourism. Um, uh kind of uh the 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 economy is is um 
dependent on, on tourism. Uh, and because of what's yeah. happened over the last couple of years with COVID, not many people um, were able to, to go on holiday to Spain. Um, that's, that's one reason the uh, Spanish markets have uh, struggled. It's also because of some uh, individual uh, stock not doing uh, particularly well within the index. Uh, as far as the FTSE is concerned, um, I think the strength of the the past is strength of the pound is something that ha- held the FTSE back. Um, but uh, overall, um, the UK economy is uh, in a much better state uh, right now than it was previously. Yes, inflation has been rising, uh, be, uh, and that's, uh, that has raised concerns that the, uh, that the Bank of England might... Um, hike interest rates sharply in the coming uh, months. But then that outlook is now Completely kind of contradicted yeah, <laughs> yeah, because of the uh, COVID situation. So um, overall, I, I would say that if, if uh, um, concerns of um, the COVID variant is um, dismissed by the market in the, day, in, in the next few days or weeks, then uh, the FTSE perhaps has... Uh, um, some room to the upside to go uh, to um, prop, uh, as we head towards the end of the year, possibly in early uh, next year as well. Uh, so yeah, I, I reckon the downside the, could be limited for the FTSE. Yeah, the, the, there is this um, um, significant, um, you know, dilemma among yeah. uh, market participants who, who who have been participating in this rally. Uh, the relentless stock market rally across the world, really, um, without taking any, uh, well, not any, but many, <laughs> yeah. um, without taking much uh, money out of the table. And uh, it seems like this variant has uh, spooked these uh, investors, uh, triggering the, 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 the sell-off be, as they realize that uh, okay, this this variant might not be harmful. What about the next one? Yeah. So yeah, there there is uh, as we enter uh, as we the, the pandemic phase of this uh, virus has ended. We we are entering the endemic, which mm. means that uh, the virus will be with us uh, for for the time being. Uh, and nobody knows whether whether it's going to disappear at all. Uh, most likely not. So, yeah. Um, uh, this is something to to watch out for when you're trading uh, um, stocks. Uh, but uh, HH Hassan also asked us to have a look at uh, gold, uh, didn't he? Um, I didn't see that question, but yeah, okay, we we can look at gold as well. Oh yes, uh, gold as well. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at the digital gold here, at the <laughs> the so-called <laughs> digital uh, Bitcoin. Uh, just we, while we're on it, we, we'll have, have a look at gold. Um, just very briefly, uh, Bitcoin um, has managed to hold its own uh, relatively well, considering everything that's happening with COVID. Uh, yeah. You would think that with um, with COVID um, um, raising concerns about demand and everything, that people would uh, would draw some money from uh, Bitcoin and other cryptos. Uh, we haven't really seen that. Uh, the market has been quite uh, strong in, in the last few days. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, Bitcoin is looking decent here, but uh, it needs to climb back above that 60,000 level for me to turn positive on, on Bitcoin again, because yeah. right now it's testing potential resistance. There's a shaded uh, green area, which was previously support. We broke below it. And now it um, has already offered some resistance, but we are retesting it again. So, you break back above and hold above, then that would be bullish. Uh, so uh, right now, where we are, it is a testing, it's trading in no man's land, in other words, uh, between the 200-day and the 21-day exponential, which has broken down. So be careful um, chasing longs if you're not already in it. Uh, let's go to gold now and um, have a look. Gold is up today, um, 0.5%. And um, previously, we uh, highlighted this uh, area, which uh, we thought could uh, provide some support. And so far, that um, has been the case. The reason yeah. I highlighted this area is because the it was the base of the previous rally that uh, took prices above uh, 1830 resistance, which ultimately failed. Uh, and then we sold off. 
and we've been bouncing around this area uh, for a while. Uh, in yeah, addition to this, um, line is in play. So, yeah. and we, you have the 200 day average as well, Victor. So, and we have the 200 day mm. moving average indeed. Uh, and, and as we have discussed previously, uh, gold tends to stick uh, to the 200 day moving average when it gets there for some time. And this yeah, look is at this. Uh, once again what's happening. So, uh, yeah, it could be uh, frustrating to trade gold at this yeah. point in time, and at least until you break, uh, I mean, not you, but uh, <laughs> the market breaks above um, 1820, I would say, uh, or below 1780. Yeah. Uh, so so short-term resistance uh, is provided by um, this level right here at um, 1800. Yeah. Um, if we break above this, um, you know, you, you can see that over the last couple of days, this, this level has held on a daily closing basis. So a, a break above that would be positive in the short term outlook. And that could pave the way for a run towards um, 1830, which was previously resistance. Um, doesn't have to be 1830 exactly, just uh, I'm talking about the area around it, around the shaded region. Yeah. Here. And then what happens thereafter remains to be seen. Uh, longer term, it will need to uh, climb back above 1830 to, to turn bullish once again um, on a daily closing basis. Uh, conversely, if, if um, support breaks down here, then um, look out below because there's not many further support levels left um, that uh, the bears would aim for until this black line here, which um, is or was a significant support in the past. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, although uh, given the, the, the current climate with the COVID situation and, uh, you know, yields going down, it doesn't look as though gold would, would revisit those levels, but things can change very quickly. So yields could rebound if uh, risk appetite improves in the markets because of, uh, you know, some scientists saying something about um, COVID not being that um, the, the latest COVID variant not being that significant, etc. Then that that could uh, hurt gold. So uh, best thing to do right now is is to to wait for gold to tip its hand to show us the way and then trade it in the direction of the break. So yeah, well, above eighteen hundred would be bullish short term, longer yeah. term above eighteen thirty, bearish if it breaks the support area. Yeah. So uh, once again, uh, if the variant is dismissed, uh, we, we could see another uh, uh, as, you know, in consequential, in, in consequential uh, we could see another leg lower, a test of 1760 and perhaps below. Uh, but uh, uh, for the time being, until the, the market is digesting the news still and uh, scientists are working on sequencing the uh, yeah. the full uh, arrangement of the spike protein and of the virus uh, in, inside it uh, we we could uh, we, we could see this range um, and, and a rather choppy range and frustrating trading to uh, hold on for a couple of weeks yeah so um that's the situation with gold and similarly with silver as well. It's, it's kind of trading um, at a key support area right now. Um, I say key support area. Uh, it remains to be seen if it will hold. <laughs> Previously, it was yeah. um, uh, it had broken above the bullish uh, flag, uh, if you call it that. Uh, it broke out and then took uh, out this resistance level here um, and then um, run into resistance at the 200 day moving average. Uh, before um, selling sharply to break the trend line. And then there was some follow through um, on the way down. So now I say um, it's testing another key level. Um, let's see if it uh, will hold this level out. Now, now, the reason I call this a key level is because of this. Um, if I um, bring this down here, you can previous see that. Previous breakout. Yeah, like gold, it's, it's, it's testing a previous breakout area. Um, it was uh, in this consolidation zone for, for a while um, here. And then it, yeah. on this particular day, it broke out. And when it broke out, uh, it, it, 
never came back to retest this level here uh, until today yeah. or yesterday. So it's testing that level now. Let's see if it will hold. Um, and if it does hold, how much of a bounce we'll get off of it. So far, we've got a very mild bounce. I mean, you can see this on an intraday basis, but the, the rebound from here yesterday ended um, when it tested the low from Friday's candle uh, before going back down again to retest this level. If this level breaks now, uh, 22, call it 23 resistance. If this level breaks, um, then um, there is a possibility we may see a, a, a stronger recovery. But I think um, this is now the level that needs to give way for the trend to truly turn bullish once again. Twenty-three seventy, yeah. which was the last, the latest high prior to the move down to test this area of support. So, um, Selva is testing a key support. It doesn't mean it will, it will hold here, but if it does hold, we will need to see some further bullish follow through in price to confirm that the low is in. Um, so you don't have to, um, you know, buy, buy it right at the low. Uh, it's all about being uh, in tune with the, uh, or being in sync with, with the market. Um, and uh, there's no harm in buying it higher and then selling it even higher, but only after prices have turned around. So with that, um, I think we have covered all the major markets that we normally do in this market, um, in this webinar. And um, that brings us to the conclusion of today's webinar. And um, let me remind you that we have a few uh, macro events to look forward to this week. Um, the two most important ones are probably the OPEC meeting happening on Thursday. And then on Friday, we have the US non from payrolls report. Now, um, on Fridays, we um, have the uh, non from payrolls webinar, which you can join us by going to our website, thinkmarkets.com. Go to the webinar section uh, to register uh, for that webinar. Uh, so, Friday's webinar will happen at 11.30 London time. Uh, it will be uh, it will be all about the non from payrolls report um, and the markets that will be impacted by it, uh, meaning the dollar and indices and gold. Um, so if you're interested in those markets, then please make sure to join us for that webinar at 11.30 on Friday London time, okay? Um, otherwise, the same webinar that we've had today will return at the same time, 11.30 on Tuesday of next week. Take care and have a wonderful week ahead. Take care and good luck.